And we're here to welcome on our next guest, Ryan Mann. He is Marketing Director over at Lean Solutions Group. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. And Ryan, I got to say, you guys have an amazing booth. Thank you. It's uh, no credit of mine. It's all of our uh, team effort and our creative director uh, at Lean Solutions Group. Amazing. And, and so, Ryan, jumping into it, I mean, AI has been a huge talking point over the last few months here, but it yeah. seems to be gaining momentum. How does AI really factor into what you guys are doing over at Lean Solutions? Yeah, so we're looking at AI, you know, every single day, ways to implement it. Obviously, like one of the scary things about AI that people talk about is, is this going to automate our jobs away, right? Is it going to take all, of, you know, over all of our work? Um, and honestly, our philosophy is that AI is a tool that uh, every person should be literate in. So for us, when we're looking at AI, we're looking at how can we improve employee performance, productivity, how can we make them more efficient? So we've implemented new tools over the last 12 months, like our partnership with SimTrain, which is AI simulated role play training uh, to reduce our training times by 40%. So taking a five week training uh, outline into a, turning it into a three week outline, which also increases their speed to green. So they get more reps in through the sims. It's a great tool. Um, and then we also have a new partnership in Latin America with a company called Let's, where we are essentially trying to eliminate the language barrier in working with remote uh, global remote workforces like ours, where our developers can now go in and train with AI on the job-related jargon that they're going to encounter on a daily basis working with U.S. teams. I mean, that's going to be really fascinating stuff. The simulations are so much fun because in the supply chain and transportation, there's so much you just don't know until it happens. So you can yeah. use this AI to make a custom train simulation, and then you're like, oh, I've experienced this before. That's really cool stuff. I mean, it, early feedback, taking it from five weeks down to three, uh, how are folks reacting to that? So our, uh, when we do surveys after the training, when we compare cohorts, uh, confidence levels are higher. Uh, people's satisfaction with the training is higher, and they are ready to get on the phone and navigate through software in real time. Uh, by the way, I've done one of those sims before, and it is, I mean, it's every bit as intense as a, as a real call, I would, I would imagine at least, right? Being on the phone, right? Having to navigate that software, ask questions, deal with an angry customer, right? <laughs> a, a carrier that's at a drop off, but he's got the wrong, uh, you know, the wrong rate con number. <laughs> so all, the, all, all those problems can be addressed in simulation environment before they get on the real phone. And so Ryan, one of the things that you mentioned really around the fears with AI and implementing it is that it's gonna automate, it's gonna automate what I do. And I'm fearful of that, but really what you're talking about is optimization and really bringing people together that really probably wouldn't be able to even communicate at some point in some time effectively to really get a job done. What are going to be some of the biggest optimizers that you're looking at when you're looking at um, AI's real influence within this space? Yeah, so within this space, we can look at, you know, track and trace is a good example, right? It's a big position that we have. We're not looking to automate that rollout because as we know, it's like it can't be completely automated, right? This is a people sport. Uh, the whole industry is based on people. It will continue to be based upon people. But what we can do is increase efficiency. So using different tools like our partner Text Locate, which automates some track and trace function, we're able to you know take somebody who can check on 30 loads a day to 60 loads a day, right? Uh, because it automates that first touch, and then they can work on the problems that they're actually having instead of having to like hit these numbers continuously. Uh, over and over again. They can focus on problem solving instead. And looking in the field of AI, a lot of these machine learning tools require an extensive library to pull from. Like ChatGPT pulls from news articles and stuff, and the free ones from like 2021. So I, I haven't found myself yet, unfortunately. But looking forward to opportunities, AI in the logistics and trucking space, do you feel like there's the potential that the first one to have their own library of trucking related terms goes through emails, goes through text messages. Is that kind of something where you can finally tailor it and make a transportation AI to where I could then have a chat assistant for a driver? Is that kind of some of the stuff that we may be seeing on the horizon pretty soon? Yeah, I think it's inevitable. There's thousands of AI tools being released almost every single day now. 
Uh, our CTO, Alfonso, is always combing through new AI tools to see what's, what's coming and what might be around the corner. Um, but like I said, I think the best tools in AI, at least for the next five years, are going to be tools that make us better at what we do. And Ryan, sometimes knowing what not to do is, is just as helpful as knowing what to do. And as kind of reminds me of when there was just this big movement around data and data is great, but not mm -hmm. all data is meaningful or maybe you're not using data correctly. Are there any pitfalls around AI, not to say that it's not useful, but really maybe areas that you shouldn't really be spinning your wheels at in order to really get the most out of this technological advance? Yeah, I think so. Um, I went to a conference that was all about AI last uh, August, and there was a saying that kept being repeated over and over again. It was uh, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, so it all starts with, you know, the data set, the data structure, how it's managed, and then, of course, you move into the data science. So I think there's tools that are ultimately going to start off. They seem promising, but ultimately, if they're they're not connected to great data and great data structures and sets and management, it's it's ultimately useless. And thinking about, let's say you're a large organization, you need to start trying to implement some of these technologies. Is that something where we're, you know, do most folks and you as well try to develop in-house or is it something where you have to ask yourself, do I need to see if there's third parties that I can connect with? Uh, when Do you ever really know if you need to make it yourself or try to find someone who can? Yeah, it's the age old question, build, buy or partner. Um, so in some cases we are building our own tools. We uh, already, well, we've built our own like in, basically an operating portal for our entire organization. We're calling it PowerQ uh, because it's removing data silos and digitizing processes. And so from that, we're going to be able to, to create some AI algorithms, some machine learning algorithms, and implement that way. Um, but we're always looking to build um, because we're a tech company, you know, a tech-enabled company, right? We have a big tech division uh, with over a thousand developers in Latin America. Um, and then, of course, it's, but we always like to look at partnerships as well. So I've mentioned a few, right? SimTrain, TextLocate. Um, and we'll continue to look at partnerships that make sense for us to help us continue to boost productivity and performance and lower costs for our customers. Now that's, I think, uh, another big one is really performance and knowing how to gauge that. And so when you're looking at, you know, internally, what kind of KPIs are you usually to like to usually track things or what kind of benchmarks are you using to like really say, all right, we're seeing progress here, here, and here? Yeah, it depends on the business, um, but we partner with obviously all of our clients and we have a, our, our quality assurance department and probably has over 40 people just focused on the metrics, focused on the KPIs, setting up what's, what should be measured, what shouldn't be measured, and then telling the story. I, I, we interviewed a a quality assurance uh, professional recently for a short docu series that we're we've been shooting this year with our with our people in Colombia, and what she said is that uh, numbers are just numbers until I tell the story, and so she really looks at it as being like uh, a storyteller and not just you know well this person's performing badly. It's like well they might be missing the mark because there's other operational issues like do you have the right processes in place do you have the right tech to fill the gaps so these are questions that we can answer with our customers um, who allow us to go in and do these workforce analytics and looking at the expansion uh, especially uh, latin american labor developers uh, i know track and trace and customer service reps outsourcing do you see the uh, are there specific areas in that uh, that are uh, growth or do you see folks moving into other regions as well or are we seeing right now latin america's kind of having its moment in terms of uh, the opportunities and the structure there to develop employees who can then help out? Yeah, I think Latin America is uh, rich in talent. Um, a lot of the countries that we're in, specifically the reason we're there is because those countries have been investing in education for many years now. And so we're seeing the benefit of that come through and the talent that we get to hire and, and place with our customers. Um, I think Latin America is definitely having its moment. I think people are getting more and more comfortable with the idea of nearshoring. Um, and one of the things that's really great is some of those old um, stereotypes about Latin American countries, um, whether there's the safety issues, et cetera, some of those things are starting to kind of melt away. And, and people are starting to see that this is like a, a place that's you know ripe for opportunity. 
Yeah, I'm definitely excited around, I think, a lot of the partnerships happening, especially in Latin America, um, just because there's just so much to be offered um, and going both ways. When you look at the future um, within AI, within supply chain, what are going to be some of the things that you are most excited about that, you know what, we're not quite here yet, but I can't wait till we are? Um, well, for me as a marketer, I'm, I'm pretty excited about a, a pilot program that we got invited to with one of our tech vendors for analytics where it's a chat GPT-like uh, system where I can just tell them I'm looking to see, you know, what was the deal velocity from, you know, lead to deal close. And it's like, okay, well, how long did that take? And it'll just pull up all the information for me and I don't have to build any more reports. That would be... <laughs> That would be excellent. <laughs> um, so that's probably the thing that excites me the most about AI is just making um, people who are not data scientists uh, a little bit have access to information and intelligence that uh, we just we don't have the time to get those skills, right? So final question here, wrapping things up. Is that kind of the next frontier is for those who are not as familiar? Like I, I can do a little bit of SQL, but I can't by all means design a table and do it. Having that ability with a chat and AI that can instinctively, the interface, mm -hmm. that opens up new doors for non-functional people. Yeah, I think so. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing going forward is going to be AI literacy. Like I said, just like financial literacy is a skill set. Like some people have it and they do great with money management and other people don't and they, they struggle, right? They're living the paycheck to paycheck life. Um, I think it'll be the same with AI tools. You'll need to be you'll need to become literate. Like ChatGPT doesn't work as well for everybody because some people know how to get the information out of it and some people don't. And Ryan, I think that's some wise words to end on there is just really understanding how to best use the technology and really get the most out of it. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So